Luo Chen crossed the Dolua continent and awakened the craftsman god's martial soul. He was born with full soul power, but his martial soul turned out to be a forging hammer. By chance, Luo Chen discovered the strength of the craftsman god's martial soul. Not only was his soul skills exaggerated to the point of abnormality, but every time he forged a piece of work, he would give himself a certain attribute of feedback. The higher the level of the forged work, the higher the feedback he gave himself. Hundred forging, thousand forging, spirit forging, until the divine craftsman Luo Chen. Who said that forging hammer martial souls can't attack anymore? Can you handle my 100,000 year old skill with this hammer? Tang Wulin. Even if it's a god, Luo Gu will still hammer it for you to see. At this point, a generation of hammer god. Oh no, a generation of craftsman god, has shaken the entire divine circle. P.S. Intelligent online, not stallion, not brainless, leaning towards ease. Keywords of the novel Doluo The Legend of the Dragon King The Craftsman God Without a Pop-Up Window Doluo The Legend of the Dragon King The Craftsman God TXT Complete Collection Download Doluo The Legend of the Dragon King The Craftsman God Latest Chapter Reading Chapter 1 Ten Years Old, Thousand Forges you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1 10 Years Old, Thousand Forges On the east coast of the Federation of Sun and Moon, Aulai City Located on the east coast of the Sun-Moon Federation, Aulai City is relatively small compared to other towns, but due to its proximity to the coast, its resources are quite abundant. Located in the core area of the entire Aulai City, in front of a store that doesn't seem very luxurious, the crowd is constantly coming and going. It's strange to say that compared to the brightly decorated buildings around, this simple and unadorned forging room is filled with an unusually large crowd. And on the signboard above this forging room, there are five large gilded characters written on it, Mengtian Studio. This is a forging shop that is neither big nor small, with average specifications and decoration. Although the crowd outside the store was bustling and noisy, a rhythmic and very light tapping sound came from this store, cleverly covering these sounds. This tapping sound, each containing a full force and rich charm, seems to be able to captivate the soul. Even tourists passing by this place, upon hearing this beautiful melody, coincidentally stop here. Among these onlookers, not only tourists who came to Aulai City for tourism, but also neighbors in the surrounding areas, and even a few noble soul masters, like others, stopped here for a long time and refused to leave. This is a forging shop, and anyone can hear that this beautiful melody is emitted from the waves of metal tapping. Forged shops are everywhere on the Dolua continent, and can be said to be very common storefronts, just like restaurants and hotels. And as they stood here, they all wanted to see what kind of blacksmith it was that could make the usually noisy sound of forging metal sound as pleasant as music. In no time, the melodious metal tapping came to a stop, leaving many people feeling unsatisfied. But even though the forging has ended, they still stay in place at this moment, looking eagerly at the entrance of the forging shop. Amidst the surprised gazes of the crowd, a tall and delicate young man, dressed in a forged suit, with a robust physique, slowly walked out of the storefront. In his hand, he was holding a pitch-black forging hammer and a shiny metal that looked very weighty. Undoubtedly, the highly melodic tapping sound just now came from the hands of this young man. Even though his face and body were covered in fine sweat, everyone present could tell at a glance the age of the young man in front of him. Young and terrifying. For a moment, the originally noisy crowd in the room fell silent. No one could have imagined that this handsome young man, who looked less than ten years old, was actually a blacksmith. The discerning person, on the other hand, was already attracted by the pure white metal in their hand. For a moment, they took a cold breath and then exclaimed in amazement. Sinking silver. This is actually sinking silver, that cannot be forged without forging a thousand pieces of silver. This statement once again amazed everyone. Although they were not blacksmiths, 
they were still more or less aware of the material of sinking silver, after all, many things require sinking silver for forging. The hardness of sinking silver makes it difficult to cut even with machines, let alone forge it by swinging a hammer with your arm. Before everyone could have a more intense discussion, a taller figure emerged from the forging room behind the young man. The elusive aura forced many people present to quiet down. Standing behind the young man was a sturdy man with long hair and a ponytail tied, and his identity was self. Evident. Master Mengtian. Several neighbors who knew the identity of the man in front of them warmly greeted him. Meng Tian saw this and responded with a smile one by one. Then, in that muffled voice, he spoke to the crowd and said. Excuse me, it was my immature disciple who was breaking through the level of a blacksmith just now. I apologize for any inconvenience caused. As he spoke, his gaze also signaled to the young man in front of him. The young man understood and bowed slightly to the crowd in front of him, apologizing. Then, Meng Tian spoke again. Please give me some face, everyone. Being stuck at the door like this is not good for my business. Upon hearing these words, the pedestrian stationed in front of the store also understood the underlying meaning of Meng Tian's words and left the store door one after another, making room for people to walk. I used to be a disciple of Master Meng Tian, and I just said that. I thought young people nowadays were so scary, uh. Just as the group of pedestrians left, an elderly man with a friendly face who looked very familiar with Meng Tian was smiling at Meng Tian and the young man in front of him. Upon seeing this old man, even Meng Tian, who was a level 6 master forging master, was momentarily taken aback before responding with a smile. Mr. Duan, why didn't you inform me in advance when you arrived so that I could go and greet you? Upon hearing Meng Tian's polite words, Duan Lao only smiled, but his gaze remained on the young man in front of him. Then, he spoke to the young man in front of him. This child, has he never known your name? Seeing the topic suddenly shift to himself, the young man was momentarily taken aback, then narrowed his eyes slightly and smiled, saying. Hello sir, the boy's name is Luo Chen, the star of the sea. Luo Chen. A great name. It seems that you're not very old either. Tell me, how long have you been studying forging with Meng Tian? The old man nodded and then spoke again, his words full of goodwill towards Luo Chen. Upon hearing these words, Luo Chen first turned his gaze to Meng Tian beside him. Seeing that Meng Tian nodded, he then spoke in response. Speaking of which, I'm not afraid of the old man's joke. The boy is nine and a half years old this year, and he has been an orphan since I remember. When he was three years old, he came to this arrogant city to make a living. The teacher saw that I was pitiful, so he took me in. He has been studying forging for a full six years, counting his money. After only studying for six years, I have already understood the concept of thousand forgings and become a third level forging master. Not bad, a good seedling. After hearing Luo Chen finish speaking, Duan Lao first glanced at the pure white metal in Luo Chen's hand, and then nodded in approval. What Luo Chen didn't notice was that while he was talking to Duan Lao, Meng Tian beside him, although his face remained unchanged, slowly clenched his palms. Even though this action was extremely subtle, Duan Lao, who was over fifty years old in front of him, noticed it. He smiled and then suddenly found himself with a small golden card and a badge embedded with three golden stars in his hand. Children, when we meet for the first time, I don't have any gifts worth holding on to. Let's use these two little things as a gift for you. Speaking, he handed the card and badge to Luo Chen's hand together. Seeing these two things, Meng Tian, who was standing behind Luo Chen, couldn't help but stare and spoke hastily. Duan Lao, is this a bit too fast? It's okay, it's just a little gadget. I didn't expect to come across such an interesting little guy just for a stroll. Ha, huh, then I won't stay any longer. Little guy, let's meet again in the future. As Duan Lao spoke, his gaze paused on Luo Chen again, and then he turned around with a smile and left the store door, 
leaving only the furrowed brow of Meng Tian and the contemplative Luo Chen looking at the card. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Craftsman God Martial Soul, Soul Lord You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Craftsman God Martial Soul, Soul Lord After Duan Lao left for a long time, Meng Tian still frowned and stood still in a daze. Seeing Meng Tian's expression, Luo Chen called out softly and handed the metal card and badge in his hand to Meng Tian. Teacher, what's the use of these two things? Upon hearing Luo Chen's voice, Meng Tian regained consciousness from his contemplation and reached out to rub Luo Chen's head, then smiled and said. You must keep these two things well, because they will be very useful for your future forging career. All right, go ahead and let me take a good look at your achievements. Okay, teacher. Luo Chen responded happily, with a childish expression on his face. However, when Meng Tian walked into the store, his expression changed a bit, and there was also a hint of complexity in his eyes. In fact, when answering Duan Lao's question just now, there was one thing he lied about. He remembered himself as an orphan, but that doesn't mean he's really a child under ten years old. Yes, he is a traveler, he just happened to have arrived on this continent, which he is extremely familiar with. Martial soul, soul power, forging. These familiar and unfamiliar words are not exactly the Dolua continent. That's why he naturally knew what Meng Tian was worried about earlier. A child who was less than ten years old and had completed a thousand forging exercises within six years of entering the school, his talent was already very frightening. The Duan Lao who just came to visit has long been aware of his identity. After six years in the industry, how could he not know about Duan Lao's reputation? He is a significant figure not far away from the eighth level holy craftsman, and he and Meng Tian need to look up to. If that kind of person sees his talent as Luo Chen and wants to personally teach him, then even a master level rogue can't say a word. Perhaps in Meng Tian's eyes, Luo Chen was just as he had imagined, just a hardworking and talented child in forging. However, Luo Chen's true situation was far more astonishing than Meng Tian had imagined. Not only his words and actions over the past few years, but also his true talents are deeply hidden. As a traveler without any golden fingers, Mu Xiu is sure to crush Lin Feng, and he understands this truth. Since you are only a ten-year-old child on the surface, don't show too extraordinary achievements. Before you grow up, everything needs to be simplified. You can be outstanding, but not too outstanding. Being one step ahead is a genius, but if you are ten or even a hundred steps ahead so, Luo Chen, who has already achieved a level of strength in forging, only shows his talent that has just entered the level of forging. But even so, it is enough to shock everyone, and the old Duan just now is a good example. If it weren't for Luo Chen deliberately showing only his talent to step into the Thousand Forge today, otherwise, Duan Lao wouldn't have left so quickly. Even the sixth level master, Meng Tian, couldn't have saved him. Over the past few years of getting along, Meng Tian has treated Luo Chen as his son to cultivate him, but why is Luo Chen not? It's not easy to stand out in this world without attracting attention. The water in this world is even deeper than he imagined as a traveler, although he doesn't have a golden finger, knowing in advance what is about to happen is his greatest reliance in this world. Just, this so dot called Forger's Association. Before Luo Chen could even think about it, both figures walked towards him quickly, and one of them grabbed him directly, then let out an exclamation of approval. Good kid, this is a thousand forge pieces. I didn't expect you to quietly climb to the sky like this. Feeling the familiar force and hearing the voice, Luo Chen didn't even need to look up to know who it was. Brother Long, you know, my younger brother's talent is quite average. I can pass a thousand forging tests, but it's just a combination of luck and strength. Luo Chen looked at the 1.8 meter tall dragon brother next to him and said with a smile. However, the other party sneered. Huh, if it weren't for your child growing up with me from a young age, I would have truly believed it. Judging from your child's clumsy habit, 
I'm afraid you're almost reaching the level of a thousand forging in one grade now, right? You still have luck and strength. Do you have the luck of a hunter? Dot. Upon hearing Long Ge's shameless words, Luo Chen just smiled foolishly and accepted Long Ge's words. Faced with Long Gu, he had nothing to hide, after all, they were all his own brothers, and he was afraid that others would expose him. As soon as Long Gu finished speaking, beside him, there was a white and pure young man who was clearly one head shorter than Luo Chen, but his appearance was not inferior to that of Luo Chen. However, he exclaimed in surprise. Luaga, have you almost forged one product? It's really fake, you're too. As he spoke, the young man fell silent and looked at Luo Chen in front of him with a gloomy expression on his face. Luaga, you not only rolled me up, but also lied to me. You said before that you were not even confident in forging a thousand pieces, but it's fortunate that I trusted you so much. Upon hearing these words, Luo Chen couldn't help but twitch his lips and look at the innocent young man in front of him. Then, as if coaxing a child, he slowly spoke up. Wu Lin, don't listen to Long Ji's nonsense. I just broke through the Soul Lord and obtained the third Soul Ring recently, which allowed me to make rapid progress in forging and quickly break through this threshold. Luo Chen spoke without any conscience, but there was nothing he could do. After all, if he didn't work hard, how could he bear the burden of being the grandchild in front of him? There is no doubt about Tang Wulin's talent, and he is definitely a cheat player. If it weren't for him, he would also have a martial soul like a cheat player. Otherwise, it's hard to say that he wouldn't be able to compete after all, Tang Wulin is a nine-year-old thousand forging blood sacrifice. Nine-year-old thousand forging sink silver. Do you know what this concept is? I see. Wait a moment, Brother Luo, have you already become the Soul Lord? I don't even know. Tang Wulin was originally pondering the reliability of Luo Chen's words, but then suddenly discovered something and looked at Luo Chen in front of him with a shocked gaze. The feedback from the martial soul is just that. You also know the uniqueness of my craftsman god martial soul. I work tirelessly day and night to forge iron, which is why I was able to step into the Soul Lord so quickly. As Luo Chen spoke, in order to prove himself, the soul rings on his body appeared one by one purple, purple, purple. Three purple soul rings, which means that Luo Chen now has three millennium level soul rings and is an official soul master. Dot. Looking at the three purple soul rings on Luo Chen's body, Tang Wulin suddenly had no intention of calming down. In terms of forging, he could even compare with Luo Chen, but in this level of soul power that's completely incomparable. Soul Lord, who is under 10 years old, still has such a soul ring ratio. Not to mention Tang Wulin and Long Gu, even Meng Tian, who is sitting and observing metal, fell silent. But looking at the two pure young men in front of him, one high and one low, a faint smile appeared on the corner of Meng Tian's mouth. His two disciples are even more talented than his master. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Departure, Dong Hai College You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Departure, Dong Hai College As a sixth-level master, Meng Tian has had an extraordinary talent in forging since childhood. The Hammer of the Earth, a martial soul, was born with a unique talent for striking metal and enhancing strength, which gave him unparalleled forging ability compared to others. However, Meng Tian's innate soul power is not very high. The level of innate soul power basically determines the cultivation speed of a soul master. A soul master with innate full soul power, whether in terms of starting point or pace, is far higher than a soul master with lower innate soul power. Although Meng Tian is now a level 6 master, due to his talent, he may not be able to break through the level of a saint craftsman in his lifetime. To become a higher dot level forging master, one not only needs a lot of forging experience, but also a certain amount of soul power to assist oneself. Meng Tian is now 30 years old, and in terms of soul power cultivation, he is no longer capable. 
Soul Sect may be the end of his life, and his inability to break through the Five Ring Soul King means that he will never be able to enter the realm of Saint Craftsman in his lifetime. And as he looked at the two little ones who seemed to have been born to eat the bowl of food from a blacksmith, he couldn't help but let out a sigh of emotion for a moment. The theory of talent applies everywhere. Sometimes, how far one can go is already predetermined from the moment they are born. Some people are destined to make a name for themselves, standing in the most dazzling part of the stage, while others can only become spectators. Tang Wulin, who was surprised by Luo Chen's soul power just now, has now returned to normal. He has come to the Mengtian studio and studied forging with him for three years. For Luo Chen's talent and personality, he is naturally very familiar. In his opinion, if he insists on giving Luo Chen an evaluation, it is, a wolf in sheep's clothing. The description of a hunter disguised as prey is very appropriate for Luo Chen. I still remember when I first arrived at this studio, Luo Chen seemed to be just an ordinary apprentice like him, but after a long time of contact with him, I could only discover his horror more and more. Although he is of similar age, Luo Chen sometimes gives him a feeling that he is more mature than Meng Tian. This can be seen in both doing things and being a good person. If it weren't for Luo Chen's appearance, he would have had some doubts. It seemed like something was on her mind when Tang Wulin suddenly spoke to Luo Chen. Luoga, I remember you haven't attended an intermediate college yet, have you? Upon hearing this, Luo Chen was somewhat puzzled. Yeah, since awakening my martial soul, I haven't even attended a junior college. What's wrong, Wulin? The martial soul awakened by Luo Chen at the age of six, although named the god of craftsmanship, sounds very trendy but in reality it is a pitch-black hammer. If one doesn't understand, they may even understand it as a hammer martial soul. However, when Luo Chen talked about his martial soul to the public, he always referred to himself as the M.O. Hammer Martial Soul, as the name suggests, a hammer as black as ink. Except for a few people, almost no one can know the uniqueness of his craftsman god martial soul, which was only discovered by his coincidence. That is to say, every time a forged product is completed, it can give itself a certain attribute of feedback based on its grade level. And although this feedback is random each time, it only improves three aspects. Physical fitness, mental strength, and soul power. After awakening the spirit of the craftsman god at the age of six, Luo Chen's own understanding of forging seemed to have been unlocked. Faced with those low dot level metals, the forging level that was previously clueless can be easily seen through the impurities contained in these metals with just one glance after picking up their hammer martial soul. The forging method, how to lower the hammer during forging, and the force when dropping the hammer, all seem to be innate, and with just a slight examination, one can understand it like the palm of their hand. Moreover, the most crucial thing is that after completing each piece of work, one can clearly feel that there is an aspect that will rapidly increase. Either in terms of focus when forging metal, or in terms of one's own soul power level, or in terms of strength when striking a hammer. Such a miraculous discovery shocked Meng Tian a lot at that time. The incredible feedback even made Meng Tian not tell Long Gu, his most trusted disciple, and constantly warned Luo Chen not to expose it. And Luo Chen naturally knew this, but he didn't think that Meng Tian and Long Gu, who had been with him for several years, were outsiders. What else could he hide from himself? So, even at the age of only nine, Luo Chen's soul power broke through to the level of soul master, and his forging technique improved to a level of one forging per thousand. Tang Wulin was only shocked and then accepted all of this. After all, they are all cheating, and one family doesn't speak two languages. Before Tang Wulin could explain, Luo Chen understood something and then smiled and said. Wu Lin, do you want me to accompany you to Donghai Academy? He had already known about Tang Wulin's plan to go to Donghai College for further studies in a while, and Donghai College had also sent him an invitation letter, but he had not considered it well. Mm. 
Seeing his own carelessness exposed by Luo Chen, Tang Wulin didn't have any embarrassing thoughts, just as he couldn't bear to part ways with Meng Tian, and he also couldn't bear to part ways with his good friend Luo Chen. In his heart, although Luo Chen had no blood relationship with him, he was more like a brother, just like Nar who had just run away from home a while ago on the side of Meng Tian, upon hearing Tang Wulin and Luo Chen's discussion, his body trembled imperceptibly for a moment, but then he was relieved, and a faint smile appeared on the corner of his mouth. Yeah, it's finally time to part ways. The wings of the chicks have grown up, and it's time to fly towards the vast sky. After Tang Wulin nodded, Luo Chen's gaze turned to the silent Meng Tian and Long Gu on the side, both of whom nodded naturally with a smile. Go ahead, little one. Let's go see a broader world with Wu Lin. With your talent, you shouldn't have buried it with me, it's just. When you're free, come back and take a look. As Meng Tian spoke, there was a rare hint of warmth in his usually sharp gaze. As the words fell, Luo Chen and Tang Wulin, who had just been chatting and laughing about the wind, remained silent in their place. Even Luo Chen, who had already matured his mind, couldn't help but feel a surge of sourness in his heart at this moment. However, he forcefully suppressed it, and his face remained calm, saying. Don't worry, teacher. After the Chinese New Year, I will definitely bring back the complete Wulin for you. Tang Wulin just emerged from the corner of his eyes. After hearing Luo Chen's words, he could not help complaining about his small face and roast. What does it mean to bring me back intact, Logo? You're not right about that, are you? Ha ha ha. Seeing Tang Wulin's embarrassing appearance, everyone laughed heartlessly. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Conflict you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 Conflict After bidding farewell to the group of Meng Tian and Long Gu, Luo Chen and Tang Wulin boarded the sole guided train heading towards Donghai City together. The size of Donghai City is quite large compared to the Aulai City where Luo Chen used to live, after all, it is a large city with a permanent population of over 3 million. Even in the entire Sun Moon Federation, it is an extremely important city for the development of marine resources. Therefore, even sitting on this East China Sea train, one can see many wonderful scenes that were not seen in Aulai City. The most significant aspect is reflected in the level of soul guidance technology. Looking around, the urban landscape of the entire Donghai City, although in a quaint style, surprised Luo Chen and Tang Wulin, who were under 10 years old, by the use of soul guided technology. Luaga, this Donghai city is so big, I feel like I can't see it all at once. At this moment, Tang Wulin was lying in front of the train window, staring intently at the completely different scenery from Aulai City, with excitement in his eyes. Perhaps due to someone accompanying her, Tang Wulin, who was originally worried about leaving her parents and master, is now very happy and constantly shares her feelings with Luo Chen. That's also normal for a nine-year-old child. Compared to Tang Wulin's excitement, Luo Chen just smiled and nodded, occasionally making a few responses. From leaving Aulai City until now, his attention has always been focused on the pedestrians coming and going around. When going out, he can't be as casual as he was at home before, after all, he promised the teacher to protect himself and Tang Wulin. Be careful to sail a ship that will last for thousands of years, and be careful not to make mistakes. Fortunately, in such a densely populated area, no one would attack two children who are only nine years old for no reason. Luo Chen and Tang Wulin smoothly arrived at the Seoul Guide train station in Donghai City. After getting off the train, Luo Chen, who was 1.7 meters tall, also provided a good cover for Tang Wulin, who was clearly a child. In the crowd, he successfully squeezed out. Ha, huh, finally out. There are so many people here, Luo Gu. Are you okay? Tang Wulin, who had struggled to squeeze out of the station and breathe fresh air, first sighed, and then her white face turned to Luo Chen behind her, unable to help but look up and ask. And when Luo Chen saw Tang Wulin's well-behaved appearance, he couldn't help but laugh. 
It's okay, I'm taller than you, so I'm not squeezed inside. Upon hearing such sarcastic remarks, Tang Wulin's small face couldn't help but darken for a moment. Everyone is nine years old, why can you grow so tall? Hey! Before Tang Wulin could speak out and refute, a figure in black suddenly collided with Tang Wulin, but fortunately, Luo Chen was always on guard around him. Just gently lifting his palm, it was easy to block the figure in black. No, to be precise, it's two men in black formal attire. When Luo Chen blocked the man in black in front of him, another man in black also walked over at this moment. I saw the two men in black, ignoring Luo Chen. After tidying up their clothes for a while, they all bowed in the direction next to Tang Wulin and Luo Chen, and then respectfully spoke. Young master. Hmm. Next to Luo Chen and Tang Wulin, a young man who was about the same height as Tang Wulin, with short brown hair and a cold appearance, slowly walked past them. Approaching the two men in black, just as they were about to follow them around and leave, Tang Wulin frowned and spoke angrily to the man in black in front of her, Uncle, don't you even know you need to apologize if you bump into someone? Upon hearing these words, not only the two men in black, but also the cold and proud young man turned around at this moment, his gaze curiously fixed on Tang Wulin who was making a sound, and Luo Chen, who stood behind him with a calm expression. But in the next moment, he put away his curious expression, with a clear hint of disdain in his eyes. Rural bumpkin, don't meddle in your own business. Two men in black, seeing that their young master did not mind, snorted coldly and scolded Tang Wulin. After speaking, he even walked up to Tang Wulin and quickly slapped him, as if wanting to knock him down. However, just as the man in black reached out his palm, a figure was faster than him. After a dull sound, the man in black who was about to take action against Tang Wulin flew backwards and fell straight to the nearby tree trunk. The speed of the attack was so fast that even Tang Wulin couldn't see it clearly. The person who took the action was naturally Luo Chen, who had been protecting Tang Wulin all along, and at this moment, Luo Chen's face was not very attractive. Although he has been constantly adjusting his mood on weekdays, when such a scene happened in front of him and he still attacked his own people, Luo Chen's temper couldn't stop surging. Fortunately, he knew the seriousness of the matter, and after slamming the man in black to the ground, he stood still and looked at him coldly without doing anything more outrageous. And when Luo Chen intervened to stop the man in black and punched him down, not only the young man with brown hair in front of him, but also the crowd surrounding him exclaimed in disbelief. Tang Wulin had not yet reacted to such a sudden change, but Luo Chen in front of him pulled him over and ignored the shiny brown-haired boy in front of him. He walked straight towards the Seoul Guide bus station not far away. At this moment, the crowd coincidentally gave way to this seemingly unremarkable but incredibly powerful young man. This is not the city of Aulai. It caused conflicts when you first arrived, but still in front of everyone. Even if they were reasonable, they probably wouldn't benefit much. It's better to leave first. After all, he knows the identity of that noble young man very well, and he will meet again soon. It's not too late to calculate today's accounts. After Luo Chen took Tang Wulin to the Seoul Guide bus station, Tang Wulin finally regained his senses and spoke angrily to Luo Chen. What kind of people are these? Are city people so domineering? Even though they were wrong, they still want to take action on me. Faced with such a situation, Tang Wulin, who had just entered society, was naturally very angry. However, when she saw Luo Chen beside her still calm and indifferent, her anger dissipated in half. My elder brother didn't say anything, so what else do I have to say? But even so, Tang Wulin's expression on her small face remained full of anger as she followed Luo Chen into the Seoul Guidance car. But what he didn't notice was that even Luo Chen, who had always had a good temper and was highly respected by him in his impression, clenched his fists and a hint of resentment rose in his eyes. It's still because of insufficient strength, nobles. Oh, it's really interesting. With such thoughts, Luo Chen's lips slowly curved into a smile, but at this moment, 
this smile appeared a different kind of forest. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Self-Doubt in Dancing Chong Kong You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Self-Doubt in Dancing Chong Kong Soul Guided Car quickly arrived at the entrance of Dong Hai College. Luo Chen and Tang Wulin did not follow the path of other freshmen following the public's reports, but directly received an invitation letter from Dong Hai College. Due to the fact that their information had already been entered into the college's information database early on, entering Dong Hai College does not require a so-dot called new student registration, and can directly enter the college. After chatting along the way, Luo Chen and Tang Wulin also eased their discomfort. At this moment, the two of them looked at the tall gate building in front of them, which was surrounded by high walls and had a very imposing layout, and both were amazed by it. Although Tang Wulin has also been to a junior college, the Sodot called Junior College is nothing compared to the huge building in front of him. The difference between a junior college and an advanced college is not just a matter of small details, or rather, it is the difference between Alai City and Dong Hai City. When the two of them first stood at the entrance of Dong Hai College, they suddenly noticed a handsome young man with a tall figure and long blue hair standing at the fence at the entrance of the college, quietly staring at them against the wall. Even at a distance of over ten meters, the two could clearly feel the chill emanating from the handsome young man. Luaga, that uncle gives me a terrifying feeling, his eyes feel like he's about to swallow me. Tang Wulin couldn't resist the cold gaze of the young man, and couldn't help but lean towards Luo Chen's direction, saying with some fear. Luo Chen first glanced at the young man, then patted Tang Wulin's shoulder and said. It's okay, it looks like that uncle should be the teacher of this college. Although he looks a bit aggressive, he should be very easy. Going. He should. While talking to Luo Chen and Tang Wulin, a cold and indifferent voice suddenly appeared in their minds, causing both of them to be startled. You too, come with me. Upon hearing this sudden sound, not to mention Tang Wulin, even Luo Chen was startled and stunned for a moment. After looking around for a while, I realized it was the handsome young man with blue hair, using his spiritual power to converse with them. At this moment, both of them had a somewhat shocked expression on their faces. They didn't expect that the young man with long hair in front of them could actually have a conversation across the air. Seeing the young man turn around and leave without looking back, Luo Chen and Tang Wulin first exchanged a glance, and then they both followed suit without hesitation. After following the young man into the east side of the college gate, the two finally realized how big the Dong Hai College was. As a large college, Dong Hai College enters from the school gate and is greeted by two roads. The west road leads to the teaching building of the senior college, while the east road leads to the intermediate college. The difference between advanced colleges and intermediate colleges is significant, not only in terms of area, but also in terms of resources. Most of the resources of the entire college are concentrated in the advanced college department. This also reflects the extraordinary qualities of advanced colleges. The number of students in the entire intermediate college is several times that of advanced college students. However, the number of students who can truly graduate from intermediate colleges and advance to advanced colleges is less than one-tenth of the total number. And Luo Chen and Tang Wulin, who were invited to study at Dong Hai College, naturally went to the intermediate college department. Led by the young man in front of him who appeared to have a cold demeanor, Luo Chen and Tang Wulin quickly arrived at the teaching building of the intermediate college and walked into an office filled with documents together. Sit down. At the young man's signal, two children, who were only nine years old, sat awkwardly on chairs in front of their desks, staring at the young man across from them. Faced with the young man's colorless, interrogative gaze, Tang Wulin, who was already somewhat introverted, couldn't help but swallow his saliva and nervously shifted his gaze to one side. However, Luo Chen did not flinch like Tang Wulin, but instead looked at the long-haired man in front of him with a carefree expression, as if waiting for him to speak. After observing the two of Luo Chen in front of him quietly for a while and gaining a certain understanding of their personalities, the long-haired young man finally spoke up. 
My name is Wu Chang Kong. I was your teacher during your studies at the Intermediate College, and I will also be your leader. As you are relatively special compared to other students, I will also take special care of you. Firstly, let me introduce you to yourself, including but not limited to your martial soul, soul power, and strengths. I want to listen to the truth. For Tang Wulin and Luo Chen in front of him, even experienced teacher Wu Chang Kong had to admit that he couldn't see anything worth the school's attention about these two children from his previous contact. From their behavior, they seem to be just two ordinary children. One has an introverted personality and is not very good at socializing, while the other is not as lively as a child of this age. Upon hearing Wu Chang Kong's words, Luo Chen didn't hesitate and spoke out his basic information. Luo Chen, nine years old, is a martial soul ink hammer and a level 31 weapon series battle soul master. His specialty is forging, and he is currently a level 3 forging master who has just completed a thousand forging. Seeing Luo Chen reveal almost all the information on his face, Tang Wulin followed suit and said. Tang Wulin, nine years old, with a martial soul of blue silver grass, is a level 12 plant type soul master. His specialty is also forging, and he is currently a level 3 forging master who has completed the thousand forging test. Although neither of them has entered the so dot called Forgers Association, they are still aware of their level in forging. However, Wu Chang Kong, who was originally indifferent in front of him, frowned fiercely upon hearing their words, not because he felt that their talents were lacking, but rather because he felt that something was too outrageous. As an elite soul master from a senior college, he also has a rough understanding of the situation in the forging industry. After all, in this society, forging masters can be said to be a very important and well-known profession. But he didn't expect that the two children in front of him, who were not even half the size of his shoe, had already possessed master-level forging skills. Moreover, one of them turned out to be a soul lord. The nine-year-old third-level forging master is already outrageous enough, and as for this nine-year-old soul lord, it is probably the most outrageous thing he has ever heard in his teaching career. Even characters like Wu Chang Kong were lost in thought at this moment, and the result was indeed beyond his expectations. After Luo Chen and Tang Wulin finished speaking, Wu Chang Kong didn't immediately doubt the words of these two children, but instead began to doubt himself. I doubt whether I can teach these two in front of me well, anyone who sees them will suffocate. Monsters End of this chapter Chapter 6 Dormitory You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Dormitory dot. Looking at the two young men in front of him with delicate faces but full of immaturity, Wu Chang Kong couldn't say a word for a while. Even though there was already a great wave in his heart, the expression on his face remained so indifferent, with no visible change. Only the hand that held the pen and trembled slightly could reflect the restlessness in his heart at this moment. This made Luo Chen couldn't help but feel a little puzzled in his heart, whether Wu Chang Kong in front of him would have a facial paralysis, teacher dance, now that the school has a rough idea of our situation, how exactly is it arranged for us? Luo Chen saw that Wu Chang Kong had been silent all along, so he took the lead in breaking this awkwardness and asked. Due to the fact that the soul master's realm was just recently broken through by him, and his soul power level has not been disclosed to anyone except for Meng Tian and the others and Wu Chang Kong in front of him. Therefore, the reason why Dong Hai College sent them an invitation letter. That's probably only due to the talent of forging, and this matter is most likely arranged by their master, Meng Tian. However, even the top executives of Dong Hai College may not have imagined that Luo Chen and Tang Wulin would quickly enter the field of forging, and even enter the Soul Lord. I have just received news from the school that they have entrusted me to personally teach you during the years you have been studying in the college. That's why I want you to introduce yourself first, so that I can understand what level you are currently at. For Luo Chen's question, Wu Chang Kong also explained it, but there was still a hint of disbelief in his eyes as he looked at Luo Chen. After all, a child who is less than nine years old has entered the realm of Soul Lord before even attending an intermediate college, 
which he can't accept for a while. However, he still couldn't understand why the little guy next to Luo Chen, who had become a third-level forging master at a young age, had a martial soul of only blue silver grass and a soul power level of only twelve. How did he achieve such success in forging can such a weak and fragile body really lift a forging hammer weighing tens or even hundreds of kilograms? I saw him give Tang Wulin a puzzled look, and then he continued to speak. Actually, even if the school asked me, I didn't intend to personally teach you earlier because I didn't want to spend my energy on things that weren't worth it. However, after roughly understanding your current situation just now, I changed my mind. It can be said that your current situation has exceeded my expectations. I don't care how you have practiced in the past, but since the school has entrusted me with the responsibility of cultivating you, you will need to abide by my teaching philosophy in the future. As Wu Changkong spoke, he paused slightly and glanced at Luo Chen and Tang Wulin in front of him. Of course, if you have any special circumstances, you can also tell me directly and I will handle them at my discretion. Perhaps due to the talent displayed by Tang Wulin and Luo Chen in front of them, they were a bit at a loss. So, after speaking about their own requirements, they silently added a sentence. And the meaning behind this sentence, with the intelligence of Luo Chen and Tang Wulin, naturally understood in their hearts. All right, that's all for now. The pile next to you is all the things you need for enrollment. Put them away. If there's nothing else to do, you can go ahead and focus on your own affairs. Remember to attend the freshman ceremony on time tomorrow. After Wu Changkong finished speaking, his dark green eyes scanned the two of them again, but in just an instant, they withdrew their gaze. Yes, goodbye dance teacher. Luo Chen and Tang Wulin both bowed to Wu Changkong, using soul-guided bracelets to collect the school uniforms and enrollment materials piled up nearby, and then left the office one after another. After leaving the office, Tang Wulin finally let out a long breath and said to Luo Chen, until the faint chill on his body completely disappeared, you really suffocated me, Luo Gu. The feeling that the dance teacher gave me just now was so terrifying. Even teacher Mengtian is not so terrifying. Upon hearing these words, Luo Chen also nodded. As a soul lord, the feeling he felt from Wu Changkong was more profound than that felt by Tang Wulin. The chill that seemed to freeze his thoughts, as well as the extreme sword intent that could be split in half if he didn't pay attention, made him feel a little nervous now. Facing a strong person who is at least at the level of the Sixth Ring Soul Emperor, even if it is just the opponent's exploratory aura, it makes it somewhat difficult for him to resist. It's really strong, almost the strongest person I've ever seen in recent years. Practice well, and it's impossible for you to reach that level in the future. Luo Chen smiled and patted Tang Wulin's shoulder, his eyes full of encouragement. Tang Wulin was momentarily taken aback, as if she had thought of something, and then smiled and said. Well, I will work hard to cultivate and strive to become a strong dancer like the teacher, so that I can earn more money and buy a lot of delicious food for my parents. Ha <laughs> ha. Upon hearing Tang Wulin's words, even Luo Chen couldn't resist and rubbed Tang Wulin's head with a smile. Although he is already a nine-year-old boy, Tang Wulin's financial and foodie attributes remain unchanged. Even with strong abilities, his goal is just to make himself and his parents live better, which is why he recognizes Tang Wulin as his younger brother. For no other reason, it's just that I like Tang Wulin's pure and childlike heart. Today is the first day of the freshman report, and Luo Chen and Tang Wulin have nothing else to do. They decided to go and explore the dormitory area of the school together. He and Tang Wulin were both assigned to Wu Chankong's class, so the dormitories they were assigned to were also very close together, separated by a wall. However, as soon as they walked into the dormitory area, they fell silent due to the sight in front of them. In front of the two of them, the scene presented was completely different from the imagined cleanliness and quietness. What was present was only the noisy atmosphere of a few children chasing in the hallway, as well as the comparison of unhealthy customs. Ignoring the noise in the hallway, the two of them walked up to the second floor of the dormitory and searched for their own dormitory. Shuttling through the hallway, 
I finally stopped at the door of a dormitory numbered 205. 205, um, that's it here. Tang Wulin looked at the dormitory in front of her, which was clearly occupied by someone, and couldn't help but excitedly say to Luo Chen beside her, as if she couldn't wait to go in and greet her new roommates. However, just as he opened the door, a broom was suddenly thrown from behind and landed directly at Tang Wulin's feet. Hey, new here, hurry up and clean up here. Seeing only a poorly dressed and looking very thin young man entering the door, his arrogant voice also increased a bit. But when he saw the figure following behind him, who just looked quite unpleasant, the originally arrogant voice suddenly came to an end in this moment. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 How dare you! You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 How dare you! The door of the dormitory was slowly pushed open, and Tang Wulin and Luo Chen, carrying luggage, walked into the dormitory. Upon hearing the arrogant and domineering words just now, their eyes coincidentally glanced at the tall man leaning against the window. Just as they had just arrived at Donghai City, they encountered so many troublesome things. Even if Tang Wulin and Luo Chen had good temperaments, some anger couldn't help but surge in their hearts. For a moment, the two of them looked at the tall man with a slightly dangerous expression in their eyes. Especially on Luo Chen, a faint aura slowly rose and then shrouded in the direction of the tall man. Zhou Changshi On a high and low bed beside him, a thin and weak man who had originally intended to speak out to dissuade. After feeling the eerie aura emanating from the tall black-haired boy in front of him, his whole body trembled with coldness, and he silently closed his mouth. Even if he had no vision, he could understand that the black-haired boy in front of him was definitely not a simple person. Zhou Changshi was afraid to kick the iron plate this time. For a moment, his gaze towards Zhou Changshi couldn't help but show a hint of sympathy. However, he didn't think anything was wrong. After all, from his perspective, Zhou Changshi's personality was too bad and he was already very deserving of beating. Now, it's normal for someone who can't afford it to be beaten up. Faced with the gaze of Luo Chen and Tang Wulin, Zhou Changshi, leaning against the window, first swallowed his saliva, and then looked at the pressing Luo Chen and Tang Wulin in front of him with an iron-faced expression. His voice trembled slightly as he spoke. Why, do you want to clean up? Do you still want to take action with me? He was trying his best to control his body, and he didn't understand why the black-haired man in front of him brought him such a great sense of oppression, as if standing in front of him at this moment was not a nine-year-old boy, but a prehistoric beast that had broken through the ground. However, even though his whole body was trembling uncontrollably, as a powerful soul master, he still had some confidence in fighting. At this moment, seeing that Luo Chen still had that arrogant appearance, he also let out a sneer. In his deep, dark eyes like an abyss, there was also a rare hint of ferocity. Let's go clean, don't you have long hands yourself? If you can't use them, then I don't mind helping you dispose of them. As he spoke, his palms slightly hooked, and the broom that had originally fallen in front of the dormitory door flew straight towards him. Then, amidst the surprised gazes of the crowd, he landed steadily in front of Zhou Changshi. Looking at the broom flying across the air in front of him, Zhou Changshi couldn't help but stare blankly. He couldn't help but wonder how the black-haired young man in front of him managed to do it. How to catch this broom without using martial soul and soul power. Just before he could figure it out, the cold voice in front of him rang out again. For the sake of just starting school today, I'm not very particular about it. I'll give you a chance to clean your dormitory quickly before I change my mind. Upon hearing these words, Zhou Changshi couldn't help but feel a surge of anger in his heart. From childhood to adulthood, he had always been the one who commanded others, and no one dared to command him like that. Go to hell. For a moment, no matter what the situation was, the strength of the whole body erupted fiercely, and with a punch of all its strength, it suddenly hit Luo Chen in front of him. Although he didn't understand how the scene was done just now, he had absolute confidence in his strength and beat the person in front of him to the ground. After all, among the peers he had met, 
there were not many who could match him in strength. This kind of imagination is indeed beautiful, but bang! A dull voice rang out in this room. After the dull sound sounded, there was also a deep howl that followed. I saw a thin and weak man sitting on the bed beside me watching a play, his face full of astonishment at the moment. Just because Zhou Changxi's punch, which had exhausted all his strength, not only did not strike the black-haired boy in front of him as expected, but also his own fist, which was now firmly landing in the other person's palm. Due to being forcefully taken down by Luo Chen and accompanied by tremendous grip strength, Zhou Changxi couldn't help but let out a painful low moan. The pain from his fist, as if he was about to crush his bones, forced Zhou Changxi, who was as tall as him, to follow the direction held by Luo Chen's palm and kneel to the ground. At this moment, Zhou Changxi's expression was becoming extremely ferocious due to pain, and there was also a hint of regret in his eyes. He never expected that his full blow would be so easily taken down. And the strength of the other party far exceeds his imagination. Still standing straight in place, Luo Chen looked at Zhou Changxi, who was lying on the ground like a dead dog and constantly barking, with no mercy in his eyes. For this kind of person, Luo Chen never leaves any face for the other party. He should not be afraid of hitting him too hard and damaging his body. He should be called to the teaching office to drink tea, otherwise it's not just about letting him shout a few times. Tang Wulin, who looked on coldly beside him, could not help shaking his head at the sad look of Zhou Jingxi, and secretly roast in his heart. Why do people always want to compare their strength with Luo Gu? Even he rarely competes with Luo Gu in strength. You are just a one ring soul master how dare you? After giving a little lesson, Luo Chen released his grip on Zhou Changxi and then took a tissue from Tang Wulin's hand beside him, wiping it off. Luo Chen was a bit obsessed with cleanliness, and he frowned as he looked at the sweat he had wiped from Zhou Changxi's hands. Next time you encounter this situation, it's better to just kick with your foot. Anyway, just control your strength. Luo Chen tried, silently roast, then looked at Tang Wu Lin and said. Wu Lin, you just saw it. No matter when you go out, be careful to avoid such a situation. Besides, I'll leave this to you. If he dares to use any tricks, you don't have to be polite to him. Mmm. Upon hearing Luo Chen's words, Tang Wulin obediently nodded her head, indicating that she understood. Luoga's words must be listened to, not listened to. While Luo Chen was talking to Tang Wulin, he suddenly saw a familiar figure standing upright at the entrance of the dormitory, looking at them with a dull expression. For this figure, Luo Chen and Tang Wulin are both very familiar, but it was not the brown-haired aristocratic young master they met just now at the exit of the Seoul Guidance Station. Ha! <laughs> Upon seeing the newcomer, Luo Chen and Tang Wulin silently exchanged a glance, both of whom understood each other's thoughts. They couldn't help but smirk, and their dangerous gaze fell on the young man with brown hair at the door. Just now, I was just focused on hitting him and forgot about you. End of this chapter Chapter 8 First Soul Skill, Gravity Control You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 8 First Soul Skill, Gravity Control Watching the figure standing at the door, Luo Chen and Tang Wulin couldn't help but rub their fists. In front of everyone just now, they didn't want to take action, but here, in this place where there was no surveillance footage that's easy to handle. Wu Lin, this guy has a hard bone, you don't need to keep your hands. Luo Chen spoke coldly, as evidenced by his clenched fists. The young master from a so dot called wealthy family in front of him was very unhappy, yes, I promise that his mother doesn't know him. With the support of Luo Chen, Tang Wulin also changed his previous restrained personality, with a brilliant smile on his face and his eyes fixed on the brown-haired boy in front of him. However, as Tang Wulin and Luo Chen slowly approached, the extremely cold-looking brown-haired boy in front of him not only had no panic on his face, but also showed a hint of disdain and contempt. I saw him let out a low growl, and a sudden yellow halo appeared all over his body, swirling up and down beside him. It was truly a century-old soul ring. 
Huh, it seems that you are not completely useless either. Since you are in the same dormitory, let's introduce ourselves first. My name is Xie Chen, a 19th level sensitive attack type soul master. You don't think your strength is just amazing, do you? I am a soul master of the quick attack series. Do you think that with your speed, you can hit me? Looking at Xie Chuan, who was not only arrogant but also full of disdainful words in front of him, Luo Chen and Tang Wulin couldn't help but twitch their lips. Looking at Xie Chuan's gaze was like looking at a mentally disabled person. Do you want to listen and see what you're saying? Do you know who is the strong attack type soul master and the sensitive attack type soul master who is restraining who? As a sensitive attack type soul master, where does your confidence come from? Is it difficult to feel like you can reverse the heavenly gang? Gravity control. Blue silver entanglement. As soon as Xie Chen finished speaking, two voices coincidentally sounded. In just an instant, the young man with brown hair in front of him was instantly entangled by the deep blue silver grass, revealing only a pair of pale green eyes. But at this moment, his eyes were filled with an extremely shocking color, as if he had seen something beyond his own cognition. Not only Xie Chen, who was completely controlled from top to bottom, but also Zhou Changxi and the skinny young man who remained silent and watched the battle silently, looked as if they had seen a ghost. And all of this originated from Luo Chen at this time I saw three crystal clear purple halos neatly wrapped around the nearly three foot long pitch black hammer in his hand, resembling a forging hammer or a weapon. Purple, purple. Millennium Soul Ring. Looking at the dreamy scene before him, Zhou Changxi couldn't help but speak intermittently, his tone full of surprise and surprise. The thin man next to him was also shocked and speechless. Because compared to the young boy next to him who was only wrapped in a white soul ring, the black-haired boy in front of me with a total of three purple soul rings wrapped around him was really shocking. The three soul rings, as well as the bright purple, are all telling the story. The tall black-haired young man in front of me, who is about the same age as them, has reached the realm of soul sovereign cultivation. Nine-year-old soul lord, or three thousand-year-old soul rings, how can this not surprise them? However, Luo Chen ignored Zhou Changxi and the thin young man, and instead walked straight to Xie Chen, who was wrapped in blue silver grass and turned into a mummy. I saw him slowly reach out and gently pat his head, then smile and say. First of all, I want to tell you that for a quick attack type soul master, a strong attack type soul master who is good at strength is undoubtedly the most dangerous existence, because you cannot resist the opponent's attack at all. This is the most essential restraint relationship. Secondly. As Luo Chen spoke, Tang Wulin beside him also walked forward with a smile on his face, mercilessly ravaging it, and took over the conversation, saying. Secondly, you wouldn't think that being fast is just amazing. Although the agility attack type is used to counter the control type, if you are locked in by two control type soul masters using soul skills at the same time, then you will have difficulty flying. Do you understand, brother? Speaking, Tang Wulin, like Luo Chen, patted Xie Chen's head as if to show off her status. Wu Wu, Wu Wu. As soon as Tang Wulin finished speaking, Xie Chen began to resist desperately, as if she had something to say. Upon seeing this, Tang Wulin also kindly helped him withdraw the blue silver grass from his mouth. No matter what, he couldn't escape the gravity control of Luo Gu. Puha. After the blue silver grass on his mouth was retracted, Xie Chen took a deep breath of air before angrily scolding Tang Wulin. Ha! Huh. Let's not talk about that damn restraint relationship for now. How did you release your soul skill? My nose and mouth are blocked. You expect me to breathe with my head, right? Um. Upon hearing Xie Chen's angry scolding, Tang Wulin scratched her head and couldn't speak. Her gaze looked awkwardly at Luo Chen, but Luo Chen also looked at Tang Wulin speechlessly. Even though he had already used his first soul skill gravity control, the control of wrapping around blue silver grass under his nearly five times applied gravity was already an icing on the cake. 
how could it even block someone's breathing hole? Seemingly sensing Luo Chen's confusion, Tang Wulin also laughed and withdrew the released blue silver grass, then awkwardly explained. Isn't it because he's a century-old soul ring? I'm afraid I can't control it, so I wrapped it around him a bit. Dot. Upon hearing Tang Wulin's words, Xie Chuan, who had freed herself from the constraints of the blue silver grass, couldn't help but open her mouth. She couldn't utter a single word, still staring at him with a resentful gaze. Escape under the control skill of a soul lord. Oh, then you really look up to me roast like this, his hands and feet also exert force secretly, trying to escape from the space where five times of gravity is applied, but unfortunately, the spirit master of the sensitive attack system is not strong in terms of strength. Even if you use all your strength, it's just a small step forward. Unless you have explosive fast-moving soul skills, it's almost impossible for a sensitive attack type soul master to escape from this gravity control. Under such gravity, he can still stand, even if his physical fitness is good, suddenly being subjected to five times the force of gravity is equivalent to his body suddenly gaining nearly five times weight. Tisk. After trying a few times and still unable to escape, Xie Chen gave up. Anyway, this is also a soul control skill released by a soul lord. If he could really get out, he would be even better than soul lord. However, at this moment, a figure suddenly appeared from outside the corridor and entered the dormitory. What happened? I saw a middle dot aged man wearing black framed glasses, with sparse hair and sharp eyes. He was dressed in formal attire, and there was a beautiful sign hanging on his chest with a few words written on it, Director of Education, after the teaching director walked into the dormitory and saw the situation clearly, there was a sudden silence in the dormitory for a moment, and then there was a roar-like scream that could be heard throughout the entire dormitory building ring through the sky. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Surprise You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Surprise It is an honor that on the first day of enrollment, Luo Chen and Tang Wulin were called by Qi Qi to the school's teaching office for tea, and left a deep impression on the teaching director who had just met for the first time. At this moment, Tang Wulin and Luo Chen were sitting in chairs holding a cup of hot tea, chatting happily with the smiling teaching director Long Hengxiu in front of them. Behind them, Xie Chen, who looked disheveled, and Zhou Changxi, who had a swollen face and a bruised nose, stood by the wall, with an iron-faced face and remained silent. I really didn't expect that you two kids, who are young, have already achieved such success. It seems that in no time, our Dong Hai College will produce two amazing talents again, uh. After understanding the general situation, Long Hengxu not only did not make things difficult for Luo Chen and Tang Wulin, but also smiled kindly and said. This is in stark contrast to the harsh criticism of Xie Chen and Zhou Changxi just now. Xie Chen is just a sole master from a wealthy family, and when it comes to the situation, Zhou Changxi is not even as good as Xie Chen. Therefore, as the teaching director, Long Hengxu naturally won't give them any face. The two people who were supposed to enter the first class were both transferred directly to the last five classes due to moral issues within the effort of Long Hengxu's one sentence. Facing the two of them, Luo Chen and Tang Wulin, who had also taken action, he had no intention of dividing the situation. Instead, he personally stood up and poured two cups of tea for Luo Chen and Tang Wulin, who were only nine years old. For a moment, the huge difference in treatment made Xie Chen and Zhou Changxi standing next to him extremely angry. They both clenched their fists and stared intently at the comfortable-looking Luo Chen leaning on the chair. However, Luo Chen just glanced slightly in the direction of the two of them, and both of them instantly fell asleep and turned their heads. After all, they just realized how powerful Luo Chen is. If it were just an ordinary second ring soul master, then the two of them would dare to challenge each other. But when faced with monsters like Luo Chen, not only were their physical fitness incredibly strong, but their soul power was also unimaginable. They couldn't even think of resisting. The gap is really too big. And how could Long Hengxiu, 
as the teaching director, not understand even what Zhou Changxi understood. A nine-year-old not only is a third-level forging master in the forging world, but also has cultivated soul power to the level of soul master such talent, in his opinion, even in the face of the legendary Shrek Academy students, was not to be underestimated. Moreover, he even possesses three purple millennium soul rings, which indicates that Luo Chen's physical and mental strength far exceeds that of a normal soul master. This is the reason why Long Hengxiu is so kind to Luo Chen. Such a talented monster-level genius was invited to this Donghai Academy. If he were to be released to another academy due to his own reasons, he would regret it. As a teaching director, it is impossible to make such a low-dot-level mistake. As for Tang Wulin sitting next to Luo Chen, although his martial soul is only blue silver grass and his soul power is only twelve levels, he is also a nine-year-old third-level forging master, and his future achievements in the field of forging are equally limitless. And like Luo Chen, he was also a special student invited to the academy, so although Long Hengxiu was not very optimistic about Tang Wulin's achievements in martial soul, when discussing with him, he was also extremely friendly. Uncle Long, since the matter has been resolved, Wu Lin and I will go back first. Due to some reasons, there are still some things that need to be dealt with, and we will visit you another day. After drinking the tea in his hand, Luo Chen glanced at Tang Wu Lin and spoke to Long Hengxiu in front of him. Upon hearing Luo Chen say he was leaving, Long Hengxiu also smiled and nodded. Well, Xiao Chen, if you encounter anything else outside the college or college, remember to contact Uncle Long as soon as possible. Uncle Long will help you solve it. Xiao Wulin, the same goes for you. You can come and sit with Uncle Long if you have anything to do. For Luo Chen's innate familiarity, Long Hengxiu was also happy to take on the title of Dragon Uncle. After all, it is rare to befriend a monster-level genius who is rapidly growing and transforming. Well, goodbye, Uncle Long. Without much pause, Luo Chen and Tang Wulin greeted each other and then left the teaching office. After the two of them left, the smile on Long Hengxiu's face also came down, and his eyes were somewhat sharp as he looked at Xie Chan and Zhou Changxi in front of him. For the sake of just starting school, each person should submit a thousand words of self. Criticism This matter is over, but if you still have such a lack of discipline, then, as the director, I have the right to let you leave from here. As he spoke, his voice suddenly increased by a certain amount. Did you hear everything clearly? Faced with Long Hengxiu's reprimand, Xia Chen and the others nodded reluctantly. Since I understand now, let's all go back and give you a chance to reform. I hope you don't disappoint me. After a few words, Long Hengxiu issued an order to expel guests. Although Xie Chen and Zhou Changxi were both holding back their anger, they were not so foolish as to erupt in the teaching department. They both lowered their heads and walked out quickly without saying a word. After everyone had left, Long Hengxiu's face changed again, returning to his smiling expression. No wonder when I asked Wu Changkong about his progress just now, that guy was constantly playing riddles for me. The surprise of this time was really big. Upon hearing Long Hengxiu's words, the secretary standing next to him nodded in agreement with a smile. These four little guys all have great potential. Although Tang Wulin's martial soul is only blue silver grass and his soul power is slightly insufficient, his ability to beat Zhou Changxi into a pig's head also shows that he is not simple. No wonder, director, you have arranged them for class 5. In the hands of the dance teacher, I believe these little ones will grow quite quickly. Upon hearing this, Long Hengxiu also smiled. Although Wu Changkong always targets me, I still approve of his teaching methods. Let's wait and see what kind of surprises this generation of kids can bring us. But at this moment, Luo Chen and Tang Wulin, who had come out of the teaching office, did not return to their dormitories like Zhou Changxi and Xia Encounter did. Instead, they left the college one after another and went to the core area of Donghai City. Their current goal is precisely the Forgers Association located near Donghai College. Not long after, 
the two followed the address given by Meng Tian and walked to a grey building. At the top of the building, there was a hammer-shaped icon that was quite eye-dot-catching. Looking at the towering building in front of him, Luo Chen had already taken it for granted and turned his head to Tang Wulin, whose small face was so excited that it turned red. He spoke in a serious tone and said, Wu Lin, when the level evaluation of the blacksmith is coming up, there's no need to reserve anything. Just let go and boldly work, and let them see. As disciples of Teacher Meng Tian, we have reached a certain level of proficiency. Understood. Tang Wulin chuckled, his sledgehammer was already impatient. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Forger's Association you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10 Forger's Association The Forger's Association, which holds a high status in Donghai City and even the entire continent, can be said that in today's society, it is impossible to separate from the profession of forging. Whether in the field of architecture, federal mechs, or ordinary civilians, the presence of a blacksmith is necessary. Therefore, at any time, the Forger's Association will not lack new blood, and even the lowest level forging blacksmiths can enter the Forger's Association for level evaluation. After passing the evaluation and completing the process, one can become an official member of the Forger's Association. Even the lowest level first level blacksmiths, in terms of social status, far surpass ordinary blacksmiths. At this moment, it was almost noon, and the time when Luo Chen and Tang Wulin came was a bit unlucky. I saw a bunch of blacksmiths coming to pick up tasks in the originally imagined empty hall of the Forgers Association. Although this is only a branch of the Sun Moon Federation Forgers Association, it seems that there are also many blacksmiths who have passed the test and joined. The number of blacksmiths in the hall in front of him surprised Luo Chen and Tang Wulin, but after careful observation, they could see that most of the blacksmiths on the level badges hanging on their chests were only at the level of two stars. That is to say, most of the dozens of blacksmiths who came to take on tasks are only second-level blacksmiths. However, this is also normal, after all, Qianzhuan is a watershed, and the gap between Baijuan and Qianzhuan cannot be filled solely by effort. It can be said that a forging master who can complete a thousand forging tasks has a significant proportion of their own talent. In order to avoid gossip, even before stepping into the gate of the Forger's Association, Luo Chen had already put on the golden badge that Duan Lao had given him before, printed with three stars. Although Meng Tian has not explained the purpose of this badge and the gold card, Luo Chen has already guessed a rough idea. Just as a group of blacksmiths were sitting on the armchairs in the hall chatting with each other, they suddenly saw two young men, one tall and one low, with youthful yet very handsome faces. They walked in naturally from the entrance of the blacksmiths association and then headed straight to the front desk. This scene caught the attention of many blacksmiths present, who looked at the two young men walking straight to the front desk with some astonishment in their eyes. After all, their youthful appearance was too young to notice. It's like suddenly walking into a classroom in a university, like two elementary school students who have just received elementary education. How can we not be surprised? I, I'm not mistaken, how did I see that black-clad child wearing a third-level forging master's badge just now? A second-level forging master, almost thirty years old, drinking tea, accidentally glanced at the third-level forging master badge on Luo Chen's chest, which was printed with three stars, and almost couldn't help but spray the tea from his mouth. Then, with an incredulous expression, he rubbed his eyes and asked several colleagues and friends beside him with a dull expression. Upon hearing these words, several people around me burst out laughing, and one of them even smiled and turned his head to look at them. Ha, huh, if you ask me, you must have lost your eyesight, but you just look like a child who has just entered intermediate school. How could it be? As soon as he turned his head and looked over, his words instantly went silent. Gulu. Then, it was clear to hear a sound of swallowing saliva emanating from him, and at this moment, his gaze was also stunned beyond measure. Because on the chest of that black-haired boy, there really is a golden badge of a third-level forging master. Well, how could it be? For a moment, the whole room fell silent. 
No one would doubt the authenticity of that golden badge, because under federal law, anyone who forges the Forger's Association level badge, counterfeits the wearer, and without exception, will be severely punished. This is the most basic knowledge that will be popularized in junior colleges, and the young man in black who is nearly ten years old in front of him cannot be unaware of it. It is precisely because of this that they were so surprised. Could it be that the black-clad boy in front of them, who is only about the same age as their child, is already a third-level forging master who has passed the forging master level test? Is the level higher than those elderly people who have worked in the forging industry for ten years? Impossible, absolutely impossible. Just as a group of blacksmiths were puzzled, Luo Chen and Tang Wulin had already walked to the front desk of the Blacksmiths Association. Hello, what do you need? At the front desk, I originally saw a sweet girl with only two handsome little brothers coming. Just as I was about to start teasing, my gaze suddenly caught sight of the forging master badge on Luo Chen's body, shining brightly in the sunlight. Her tone suddenly changed. Not only did the words become formal, but for a moment, even the look in Luo Chen's eyes revealed a hint of suspicion. Seeing the young receptionist in front of him suddenly getting serious, as well as the discussion from the forging masters behind him, Luo Chen nodded imperceptibly. Wearing this forging master badge, as he had anticipated, the trouble was much less, and he was no longer just a little brother. Since coming here, he has always been called little brother by people, and he feels very unhappy from the bottom of his heart, after all, he is not young. Hello, due to some matters, I would like to contact President Mu Chin. As we have not contacted him in advance, please kindly inform me. Facing the sweet girl's question in front of him, although Luo Chin appeared very young on the outside, his eyes were completely devoid of the ignorance and ignorance that this age should have. The words were full of an old dot fashioned aura, looking like a child learning to speak in an adult's tone. Not only did Tang Wulin beside her feel confused, but even the sweet girl in front of her was stunned. But what she cares more about than that is why a child who is only ten years old would approach the president of their forging association. However, this issue was easily resolved when it was associated with the golden badge on his chest. Such a young third level forging master. Isn't this little guy a genius from the Federation of Sun and Moon, or is he a disciple of the President? The sweet girl's mind is full of thoughts, but on the surface, she still wears that professional smile. Unfortunately, sir. The President just left a while ago and is not here now. May I ask if you have anything important to do with the President? I can convey it to you. Before the girl could finish speaking, a dull and curious voice suddenly rang from the side. Don't bother, I'm here. End of this chapter